you know, I've just been a big fan of yours just really in the last, like, two years. I heard of you, you know, through the Winery Dogs. I really love the music you put out with that. And, you know, up until recently, I hadn't really heard much of your solo stuff, and I've just been going through your back catalogue on Spotify, and it's uh, brilliant stuff. Uh, I didn't realise you'd uh, released so much material over the years. Um, I Yeah, definitely can't believe you slipped off my radar for so long, because you're just such a great uh, all-round, you know, instrumentalist, uh, great singer. There's so many good songs. Um, yeah, just, you're coming down to Australia in August. Are you excited about the tour? I really am. You know, I've been trying to get down there for many years and just never lined up, be it scheduling or, or what have you. But finally, uh, it just so happens I got a new record out and we got a opportunity to come down there and play. So I'm I'm thrilled to uh, to be able to come down there. Um, you know, we, we started the tour about five weeks ago in the United States. And so the band's playing better than ever. We've been together about seven years, the three of us. And uh, I, I'm really excited to have the opportunity to come down there. I can't wait. Yeah, cool. So I'm guessing you'll be playing a lot of stuff off the new album, Salting Earth. But uh, as I've said before, you've got a lot of uh, albums. Can we expect kind of like a greatest hit set as well? Well, you know, we, we are talking to songs off the new record, which is kind of uh, unique for me. Usually I make a record and I do two or three songs from the new record. But um, this time we're doing about six or seven. And, of course, we're doing some of the older stuff as well. Um, I'm doing a lot more uh, keyboards on the live show. I, I have an electric piano that I'm, I'm playing, and so there's that element, which is fun for me because I get to take a break from the guitar, and then when I go back to the guitar, I feel a bit more inspired to put it on. And uh, we've got another moment in the set where we've got an acoustic section where our bass player plays upright bass, and our drummer sits down in the cajon, and, and that's kind of a cool, intimate set. Uh, so... I think it's a good time for me to be coming there because we've uh, evolved a lot since we started playing together and it's probably the most in-depth show we've done so far. Yeah, cool. And as, as I said, you play keyboards, you play guitar, you play a few other instruments as well. Um, where did it all start for you? Uh, what was your first instrument and uh, when did you start becoming you know, a really uh, good player? Well, I initially started taking piano lessons when I was very young, but I don't really count that because I, I didn't really take to it very well. A few years after that, by the time I was seven, I started taking guitar lessons, and that's where I, I really made the connection to the instrument. And then from there, um, everything just kind of fell into place. And, you know, I, didn't, I did not abandon the piano. I still, you know, used it as a writing tool and, and that sort of thing. But, you know, it all comes down to my creative process, really. I don't even separate the instruments so much. I, I look at it as my ideas and my songs and, and what do I have to do to bring them to life. So it could be a, a song that is more featured around the piano or it could be a song that's really more based around a bass line, actually. So they're all different, but the end result for me, the, the, the final, you know, the, the primary focus is, is the song. Yes. Now, I, I play a bit of guitar, too. I play electric and acoustic, and I'm absolutely hopeless if I play electric guitar without a pick, but uh, you don't really play with a pick much these days. Uh, when did you start doing that, and, and like, uh, how long did it kind of take you to you know, be able to put down the pick and play fluently, just with your fingers? Well, you know, I start, you know it's funny, because I always would play a song or two here or there, finger style. Uh, it's a sound that I've always loved, but yeah. I never really committed to doing that throughout an entire show until about ten years ago. And I just had a dreadful performance somewhere in Brazil where I did not like anything I played. And I wanted to try to challenge myself, and so I figured, well, the only thing I can do is take something away, because I'm not going to be able to add anything to my repertoire in one evening. Yeah. And so I decided to attempt to play the show without a pick. And so it actually worked, and from there I kind of stuck with it, and it opened up a lot of doors for me. Um, I actually relearned some of the things that I used to do with a pick and learned how to do it finger style. And then on top of it, I opened up other doors with my finger style technique. So it was really something that I'm glad I did it. It just opened up many doors for me. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, uh, the only other guitarist I can really think of that uh, plays without a pick, you know, electric style, is uh, Jeff Beck. Was he a big influence for you? Believe it or not, no. I mean, I, I don't. I, I didn't even have any of his records when I grew up, which is kind of odd if you think about the fact that I'm doing finger stuff. Yeah. But I will say, I saw Jeff Beck live uh, 
many, many years ago at a venue that doesn't even exist anymore. And, mm. and by far, it was the best guitar show I've ever seen in my life. It was just stunning, sensational. Um, I thought it was just fantastic. Uh, but as far as a, a, a real influence in, in my playing, I, I never had any of those records, and I, I feel embarrassed to say that. But, um, you know, my influences on guitar, uh, believe it or not, Stevie Ray Vaughan was a big influence at one point. Um, Eddie Van Halen was an influence. George Benson was a big influence. Um, so, you know, I do have influences. Uh, you know, I grew up outside of Philly, so a lot of my influences are based on that sort of kind of Philadelphia sound. You know, even Hall & Oates, believe it or not, was a big influence on me. Yeah. Uh, now, I was just on YouTube earlier. I was watching a couple of clips you did with uh, Tom Morello. I think it was Billy Sheehan as well. Are uh, you doing uh, Koshai by Audio Slave? And, you know, unfortunately, the sad news of Chris Cornell. I'm just... Uh, Hello? Oh, hey, can you still hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. Yeah, I was just saying, I was watching a clip on YouTube where you're performing uh, Koshai by Audio Slave with uh, Tom Morello, and uh, you really nailed the performance. I'm um, just... You know, obviously the really sad news because uh, you know Chris Cornell was definitely my era of music. Is like the band I listened to pretty much all the time in high school. Uh, I was just wondering, you know, did you have much of a relationship with Chris, and uh, how did you end up meeting Tom Morello and uh, jamming with him? Um, you know, I, I did I did not know Chris. Um, yeah. Obviously, it's a it's an unthinkable tragedy. I, I wouldn't even know where to begin to, to talk about that because yeah. I. I on my comprehension, but um, Tom, uh, I, I remember meeting Tom many, many, many years ago when I first moved to L.A. I think it might have even been before his band became so famous, yeah. and um, met him somewhere in a hotel bar, hanging out. I doubt he would remember, but I, I remember it, and um, Tom was one of those people I'd run into, you know, here and there, living in California, and... Uh, as far as doing that song, um, it was actually, believe it or not, Mike Portnoy who, who put that wow. together. Uh, he suggested that I sing it, sing that, and um, so uh, I did it. And it was a lot of fun. I had a great time doing it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, a lot of people also compare your voice to Chris Cornell. Was he an influence on your singing style at all? Or is it just kind of coincidence that you know you kind of do the same sort of style of vocals? Yeah, no, much much like the Jeff Beck comparison, I, I didn't have, you know, Soundgarden became famous after I was already uh, started making records, so um, I, I didn't really grow up, you know, the same way you did, you know, listening to that music because I'm a bit of a different generation. But, you know, there uh, undoubtedly, you know, people compare uh, me to him, and, and it's, uh, it's flattering. He's one of the greatest all-time uh, rock singers, you know, before... Um, he was a household name, believe it or not. I got compared to David Coverdale, and yeah. even at some point, somebody compared me to Ronnie Dio. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the guys I listened to, one of my big-time influences that I did uh, really, really study was Terrence Prandotti uh -huh. and um, also early Rod Stewart and Paul Rogers. They were my biggest vocal influences. Yeah, cool stuff. I'm just wondering, what's kind of your primary focus for music, with, you know, in the next 12 months? Are you going to do any more shows with the Winery Dogs, or are you focusing more on the solo thing? I have so many shows booked in support of this new record that we're locked in for the next year and a half uh, doing shows in support of the new record, so I'm thrilled with that. Uh, as far as the Winery Dogs, uh, I love Billy and Mike. We made two great records. And I'm sure at some point we'll get back in the studio and make a third one. But we all agreed that, um, you know, we you know, have uh, other things that we want to do. And no disrespect to what we do together, but I wanted to go off and, and make another record, as I've always done. Uh, Mike does his progressive rock thing, which is, is beyond, you know, the, the wheelhouse of the winery dogs. And, of course, Billy has a, a legacy act with Mr. Big, and he, they just made a new record that I... Yeah. Hear, uh, people are talking about it, they say it's fantastic. So, you know, we all have lives outside of the winery dogs, but that doesn't mean that we don't love doing the winery dogs. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it'd definitely be cool to see the winery dogs as well. I'm sure you guys will do something at some point. And uh, I still haven't seen any of your bands live, so I'm excited about your tour in August. Great. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for. 
thanks for the opportunity to talk to you guys. And all I'll say in closing is I can't wait to come down there. It's been way too long. I've never been there. And I'm very thrilled and honored to be able to come to Australia. Well, cool, man. Well, I'm looking forward to the show. I'll be taking some photos there, so I'll post them up on Instagram and all the social medias, and I'll tag you on all of them. It's uh, sticksforstones.net if you see it pop up on your screen. Awesome. Great. All right. Thanks very much, Richie. Enjoy your day. All right. Thanks. Ciao. Bye. Bye. <laughs>